ordinary meeting of Mount Isa City Council. The time is 9am and I now declare this meeting open. Uh, Mount Isa City Council would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet, the Kalkadoons, and pay respects to elders past, present and emerging. And I'd also like to extend that respect to uh, any one of uh, Australia's First Nation people in attendance today. Please note that this ordinary meeting of Mount Isa City Council may be live streamed and recorded in accordance with the Council's recording of Council meeting policy. As a visitor in the public gallery, your presence may be recorded. By remaining in chambers, it is assumed that your consent is given if your image is inadvertently broadcast. Now I'd like to welcome Lee, who's going to grace us with a, a prayer today. Thank you so much, Lee. Thank you, Lord. Well, Holy Spirit, we just welcome you here today. And we thank you, Lord, that your word says that he whose nation acknowledges you is blessed. So we acknowledge you here in this place this morning, and we thank you that you would reside over this meeting. We thank you for the people that you've called by name here that reside here at the moment, and we thank you for that wisdom and understanding and that, Lord, we would continue to acknowledge you in the times that we're living in. We thank you for direction. We thank you for uh, new insights and a spirit of unity amongst the councillors today. We thank you for the good fruit that will come out of this meeting. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. And Lee, before you put the microphone down, where, whereabouts are you from? Which church? Um, just representing Christian Outreach Centre this morning. Yeah, Pastor Keith Christie. Ah, well, welcome and thank, thank you Thank you very much. much. For the thank prayer. you for having us this morning. It's been yeah. a pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so that takes us to apologies and leaves of absence. And I, I think we just got a, a councillor running late. Oh, yes. Um, councillor Coglins um, puts her apologies in. She's just going to be a bit late this morning. Thank you, uh, Councillor McRae. So now that takes us to item four, which is public participation. And uh, I believe we've got one person, which is Peter Bolger. And I'll just get you to talk into the microphone, Peter. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to address the council meeting today. I've got two issues to bring up, mainly the state of the drainage easement in um, Kakoda Road and Chafin Street, another one in Rebecca Street, Enid Street and Spence Street a whole corner block there. But um, first of all, the um, easements, uh, the badly overgrown easement in Kokoda Road is um, the responsibility of the Department of Science and Environment based in Cairns. I was told they used to have an office here, but that was many years ago and they certainly don't have anything now and no representation. Um, but they're getting the funds from the state government to... Oh, sorry. I'll put my glasses on. Right. Apologise for that delay. Um, I've had a letter um, from the Mount Eyes Council. As you're aware, councilmen areas uh, in Mount Eyes, including a number of easements, mainly drainage easements, for whatever historical reason, there are also a number of that are under the care and control of the Department of Environment and Science. So Mount Isa, then the reply from the Department of Environment and Science in Cairns, um, this from Mount Isa City Council, Mount Isa City Council has contacted that department and asked them to look at the maintenance requirements of the areas. Um, Department of Environment and Science has cited a lack of resources and asked if Council can maintain the areas. Council agreed if and were to fund it, and there the matter lies. Um, and as Mount Isa has just turned 100 years, I think Mount Isa is capable of looking after their own things. Um, so I urge the Mount Isa City Council to um, approach the state government to get those funds straight to you, the council and not go into Cairns, who um, they're so taken up with um, 
the um, um, coral, what is it? The um, barrier reef. Sorry about that. Um, they're so involved, and they get so much money to to look after that and pamper it. Um, they've got no interest in Mount Isa, little easements. And there's also an easement at the corner of Rebecca, the Inner and Spence Street. I know this council must have cut the lawn on the vacant block next to it, but the easement has a temporary fence which has been protecting the easement for two years, um, which is paid for by Cairns Environment and Science Department. Um, but they're not doing anything. It's, and ratepayers are paying for the hire of that security fence, which I've got photos of. Um, and so I do urge the council to apply to the state government to get those funds to come to Mount Isa and not damn cans. Um, and hopefully they follow, you follow that up. So that's, but another point I would like to bring up is the state of the road in Enterprise Road, corner of Enterprise Road and Traders Way. Um, there are multiple uh, potholes, deep potholes, at that intersection. And I wonder if the council can urgently look at that and see why it's been like that for the last six weeks. Which is, because um, it does have a lot of heavy traffic and everything going in that area. Yep. And I've got photos too on both of these. If I should have had copies of them all, but I haven't got enough copies, so That's apologise right. for that. If you can leave, um, do you mind leaving your photos behind? Well, yes, yeah, yep. all right. Okay. And we'll um, so thank you very much again for allowing me to address the council. Thank you. Thank you. And but do please apply to the state government to get these funds. I'm trying to get the budget of the Cairns um, Environment and Science Department, which I think is around over $200 million a year. Yeah. Um, but even Robbie Catter's office, they said it's closed, I can't get it. So I'm keep pushing it because we've got to see their budget and, yeah. you know, I think Mount Isa should get a, a million dollars to look after all the, all the easements because I've noticed other easements, there's two in Barclay Highway which in 40 years I've never noticed before and they're, they're not being cut down either so, yep. um, you know, was, and council, Mount Isa City Council said well we're full out, we're working six hours, six days a week, we can't keep up with what we have to do, well they could contract it out or put on two extra staff. But you must have that money coming to the Mount Isa City Council to do it. And yeah. Cairns has got no right to be getting it. So thank you very much again. Well, thank you, Peter. And um, perhaps um, the, the easement issue is something that, um, as councillors, we could have a discussion on uh, uh, at a later date to have a, um, you know, and there's no doubt that, you know, there is a waiting game. And perhaps we're just about to do the budget process that we may have to stick a small amount aside so that we can actually deal with some of these issues straight away and then go back to the state government and get a um, reimbursement because you're right we are waiting long periods of time so these are the com this is a conversation we probably should take with the councillors on how we want to um, progress this going forward with the potholes i'm really glad you mentioned this because it is taking a long time to get these potholes addressed the good news is the state government is going to um, reimburse council for all the work we do, which is fantastic. So, and the um, unfortunately, it is taking longer um, than expected due to um, the, the the weather event. Not just affected Mount Isa, it affected all our neighbours. So we're at the moment we're, we're we're struggling to get the the right staff in to do traffic direction, things like that. But it, we, um, we are making it a priority and we will have a look at that intersection, but there is quite a few um, areas around Mount Isa that, um, are, 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 that we know are quite bad and we are looking to put some media out to let the community know that we are working on this and we are hoping that, you know, in the next few weeks we can knock over most of this. Is, is there anything else that probably needs to be added to that? Can I add just one thing? Um, oh, yeah, about 18 months ago when they last cut it, there was a private contractor with just a whippersnipper and a ride on mower and I went over to him and said, how come Mount City Council's not doing that? He said, I was engaged by Cairns 
So they got a private little um, garden person to cut yeah. this down last time, 18 months ago. Um, and, and, and that's something we can take up with them because the communication probably isn't as good as it could be and maybe we need to open those communication lines and, and see. And, and um, I'm not sure on the details of that particular one. It may have been we couldn't have done it at the time and they've just brought someone in. Yeah, uh, yeah. no, they're not well, interested. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely look into this and All we'll right. find a, a... And it might be putting some, some money in the budget away so we can, you know, because at the end of the day... It's I am pushing Robbie Catter's office to get a copy of the, their budget um, and it's got a lock on... When you look up their site, it's got a lock on it, so it's sealed. But to me, the public should be able to see that, their budget. And to me, I think I was reading they were getting $200 million just to look after the barrier reef, so... Um, I'm pushing all the time to get a copy of their budget, Good if it's possible, <laughs> which I will inform to the Mount Isa City any, Council. Any money <laughs> can save ratepayers, we appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, bye. Thank you. And thank you for your allowing me to address you. No, thank you, Peter. Really appreciate your comments. Now takes us to the um, confirmation of the previous um, minute meetings. Would someone like to move the um, officer's recommendation, please? I'll move, Madam Mayor. Thanks. Uh, that the minutes of the ordinary meeting held on the 22nd of March 2023 be confirmed as a true and correct record. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Can I get a second for that motion? McRae. Thank you, Councillor McRae. All those in favour? And that's carried. Uh, item six, which is actions from previous council meetings. Would someone like to move the officer's recommendation? Uh, yeah, I'll move again, Madam Mayor. Uh, the council receives and notes the outstanding actions from previous council meetings as at the 14th of April, 2023. Thank you. Can I get a seconder for that motion? Second. Thank you, Councillor Tully. Um, any comments on this one? Sorry, yeah, just yep. through the chair, I was wondering how that the sublease for the soft walls going. Is there any update on that? Is it, did we give them two weeks or four weeks? I don't remember. Like to okay. Yeah, no, it was it was going to be put out or someone was. Thank you. Wait, we're now? Okay. But um, just through the chair, and Councillor McCray might be able to answer, um, the um, uh, Country University Centre, I understand that's um, being held up a little bit? Um, yes, it's held up just trying to get the contract signed um, to sign off on the funding. Um, the board is kind of um, at a standstill until it's the funding signed off. So until Council can finish negotiating that. It's to do with um, the lease agreement with TAFE, which was the preferred site. So as soon as the lease agreement signed off, um, the department agreed to the funding, um, that contract signed, and we can progress from there. But until then, the whole project's at a standstill. Mm. But I know the team are working diligently on it. I'm seeing email communication to and forward. Yeah, I'm sure they are. I just, I, I mean, I, I just wonder if um, we have an opportunity to bring it back to the table to have a look at it again. Um, like I, I've never been comfortable with that, the site, you know, I mean, I, I, I know it's, it's where we ended up and that's fine and we support it 100%, but um, <coughs> if we've got an opportunity to have a look at it again, to, you know, I, my view is it really should be up t in, not uptown, in the centre of the CBD or somewhere, but um, as you're aware, but um, uh, if we've got that option. Yeah, I think Deputy Mayor, everyone's preferred location was to be in the centre of town, but the opportunity came to start with TAFE as we were under the understanding that it was going to be a lease free arrangement. Um, now it looks like there will be some sort of lease, so that sort of negates the benefits of of the decision to move there. Yeah. I'm aware yeah. of that. And I do see in the um, library report that there has been um, some sort of funding allocated to do upgrades to the library, which I wasn't aware of either, so I'm wondering 
do we need to revisit that as because um, what stopped us going to the library was the cost of the upgrades needed to have the country university centre there. Mm. So, yeah, well, you know, I mean, it's given the conversation we need to have. After the meeting. Yeah, I just wonder if um, I don't know if we do it here, but if we could look yeah. at having a. Well, it's not the theory, Madam Mayor. It's not difficult to do. Um, we certainly won't execute a lease until it comes back to you. So happy to arrange that um, and give you some precise advice as to where the lease negotiations get to because they are delicately poised and it may be that we don't arrive at satisfactory terms anyway. Yeah. So um, when I've got some clarity, I'll, having been a little bit involved in that issue, I'll, I'll come make sure we can discuss it in the next uh, round of meetings or uh, the next budget meeting. Mm. Sounds good. Like. And, and uh, just on your point, Deputy Mayor, um, um, and Councillor McCrown, I know you've had an opportunity to go and have a look at a few country universities and so have I. Um, the, the, my thoughts are um, there's nowhere adequate at the moment in the CBD and it sounds like these things grow exponentially very quickly. Mm -hmm. So um, I think the TAFE may not be big enough in the future either or, you know, we, but it's, it's going to be huge. These little towns are, ha are having huge numbers go to these country universities. So yeah. imagine the numbers we're going to get in Mount Isa, especially one or two or three years down the track. So if we go too small and we're not prepared to move quickly, we're going to really find ourselves in a, in a situation which is, um, so I think the TAFE is the, the best option, but you know, depending on contracts and well, until we can upgrade the library, which I look at the library now, and even if we'd upgraded the up upgrades, we would have still been having to upgrade again in a couple of years. You know, it's so not big the, enough. The TAFE option may be the best at a point in time to mm -hmm. get it established, yeah. and then but it's a transitional. But the master arrangement. plan for the library would be suitable. You know, the, the you know maybe with some jigs, but it, the master plan for the library, if we can get the funding would be the ideal, you know. Yeah, and through the chair, I'm hoping to do um, a report back from the library um, forum that I went to recently. They've only just released all the reports, the research and the papers within the last week. So I'm hoping to collate something and present back to council because um, there was a whole conference on all the things in the community and services that the library can provide, um, including, you know, um, I guess, outpost services to Tamil Wheel for literacy and, um, different meetings around, different activities around town that can be coordinated through the library. Mm. So, um, you know, if we are able down the track to get that done, I think the university would be best placed there in the future. Absolutely. And I think uh, that master plan is, is, is going to be crucial to getting that right and getting the funding. So we'll... Might have. Well, just through the chair, is that the 25 million? The plan? Well, you know what, that, that, was, that was... If you looked at the master plan, it was doing some kind of walkway over to the other side of the river and it was it was huge so there's no doubt we could bring that right back you know it was it was pretty extravagant the whole master plan mm. and i think it was also linking the three buildings wasn't yeah wasn't it, as well yeah so it was pretty extravagant so we might be able to even stage it so we get the body of the work done and then if you want all the nice to have later but anyway i do concur mm. that um Yes, the TAFE, the TAFE is going to be the temporary place for the CUC if we can get the research at the time. Yeah. And it's no one's favourite, <coughs> best option, but it's all we've got. Okay. So, through the Chair, is it, do, we, do we want to revisit that at this point? Um, I, I would like to, um, myself, if we could um, As it organise re it. Revisit what, sorry? The uh, Country University Centre. Um, uh, location? Yeah, well, everything about it, I suppose, like um, where it's, um, where you know, where, where the contract's up to and what, what sort of involvement council can a, have in a, it. An update? Sort of yeah, an yeah. update. Yeah, certainly we can organise an update. Yeah. You on board with that? Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. I just okay. don't know when we're going to get that done before we... It, it won't be. It'll be, uh, it'll be after you get back. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Fair enough. We're just running out of time, aren't we? This year's already flying. Mm. Okay, so if there's no more comments, all those in favour? And that's carried. Um, that takes us to decla declarations of conflicts of interest. Um, I have a, um, I'm on the board of MITES and they have put in for a grant, but 
um, because I am the council appointee on that board, I don't have a conflict of interest, apparently. I'm just highlighting that. Mm -hmm. I have a uh, conflict with 14.1, um, I'll be leaving the room. Okay, so thank you. Yeah, um, through the chair, I'll have a conflict as well, 14.1, I'll be leaving the room. Okay, just with the grants. Yes, yep. uh, with the sponsorship, not the community grant, with the sponsorship, with the Legends of the League. Okay. Oh, that one's not in the recommendation. Does that matter? That Legends of League's not in the recommendation. It's not recommending that we give them anything. It's not the question of what's in the recommendation. Oh, right. Okay, so... <coughs> And for the mayoral minute, uh, um, I just wanted to um, point out to everyone that the um, Queensland Police Service are having their Rugby League State Championships in Mount Isa. So I'd like to welcome all the police from all around the state who have converged on Mount Isa in the last day or two. Um, so if you have noticed a lot of people walking around, say hello and make them welcome. Um, we all know how much it costs for us to go away and represent Mount Isa, and it's fantastic that they have spent what would have been a lot of extra money to come to Mount Isa and support us as a community on 100 years. So um, welcome to the Queensland Police, and I, um, if anyone out there is uh, a rugby league fan, uh, Alec Inch kicks off at one o'clock, and I believe it's on all day today, and all day Friday after one o'clock for finals. All right, so that takes us to item nine um, for reading and consideration of correspondence, which is nil. And then that puts us into executive services reports, and that's the third quarter review for the operational plan. Um, would someone like to move the officer's recommendation? I'll move, Madam Mayor, that Council receives and note the report on the third quarter operational plan report for the 2022-2023 financial year. I'll second Thank that. Thank you, Deputy Mayor, and seconded by Councillor Fortune. Uh, any comments on this one, Council uh, um, Deputy Mayor? Uh, no, not much, Madam Mayor. I think it's uh, straightforward. They're uh, ticking off the, um, the targets as they go forward um, <coughs> through the operations committee. So. Um, uh, I don't have anything there that I, I particularly want to raise. Thanks. Right, Councillor Tully. Um, the thing that's been taken off there, is there any reason why it's been taken off and, and who's taken it off? Um, beg your pardon, ma Madam Mayor. I'm struggling to hear today. So. You're right. Maybe I should talk louder. Uh, it's me. Definitely me. <laughs> no, there's uh, the 1.2 on the. Um, uh, Operational plans been removed, and I was just wondering why it's been removed, and if there is any reason why it's been removed. It just says it's no longer needed. Uh, there's, yeah, there's no explanation. I'll get you an explanation. I'm not familiar with that yeah. as to why. So, thank you. Is, is that because we've already got a strategic plan, or? I don't know. It's, and it's uh, obviously the officer that, that did the work's left us now, so okay. um, we just don't have that continuity of uh, understanding of the, some of the yep. some of these issues historically. Okay. Any other comments on the this one? Uh, just through the chair, um, I, n a number of the items um, uh, have a review required. Is there any dates down, Mr. CEO, to? Who do that review? We, we've just, if I may, to you, Madam Mayor, we've just got um, uh, Tim Rose, as you know, uh, doing the job that Andrea Lee did and was away for quite some time. So we, we are still in catch-up mode. Um, and he is working both on the current year but also getting next year's plan crafted. And as you know, you have to have that adopted prior to adopting the budget. So. Um, 
I think the reality of things is that we are still in catch-up mode and there will be some, uh, some items where the dates are going to slip. Um, and I would say to you that some of the priorities in this plan are, uh, have probably been superseded by stuff that we're dealing with that isn't in the plan and that'll become evident uh, in the next couple of uh, weeks and months. So particularly as we craft the, the plan for next year and you consider and adopt the budget because both of those things go, go together. Um, and that's the best I can say to you at the moment. So uh, there's no doubt that there will be some items in here that where some, some dates will lapse, but I'm, my view of the operational plan that I've said before, it's, it's pretty much an expression of some elements of business as usual. We need to move beyond that to being clear about those issues that are just non-negotiable priorities and those things that are an improvement agenda for the organisation. I think the next <coughs> operational plan needs to be expressed in those terms and that will drive some, some performance management. Um, and I think those things are difficult to argue with. So personally, uh, I appreciate that it's important to the council, uh, but I think the important thing is to move beyond an expression of business as usual stuff to focusing on the improvement agenda particularly. Yeah, sorry, through the chair. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate all that, darling. And, and I just think, as as long as the councillors are aware of any um, things that aren't being done, yeah. when th they're on the operational plan, to say that they are, uh, are being done. So I mean, if they're not being done, we probably need to know that they're not yeah. being done. Well, at the moment, that's this process, and it's a pretty pretty simple one. Yeah. Uh, my experience, there's a, there's a more proactive. Yep. approach probably similar to what you're yep. describing yeah. uh, and it's really using it to drive a focus on particular things rather than just an acquittal process every yep. quarter uh, which is you know a, an exercise in acquittal and that's it yeah so like I said yeah I mean we're not I'm, I'm not saying that we need to be involved in in, in the operation but yeah. I mean if it's on the plan yeah and it had, isn't going to be done. We either get rid of it or, or say, yeah. you know, it's not going to be done. Yeah. At the reality at the moment, we've got a person that's been here a couple of weeks and he's getting his head around yep. these things. And, uh, you know, some of the people who are involved in crafting this the document are, are no longer here. So that's the reality of this year, I think. We've got to move beyond that. Thank you. No more <coughs> comments? All right. All those in favour? And that's carried. And Agenda. did you, um, H have you sent us minute a that Councillor Coughlin is now here? Terrific. Yeah. Okay, so that now takes us to item 10.2, which is the adoption of a flag protocol policy. Would someone like to move the officer's recommendation? I'd like to move that Council adopt the flag protocol policy version 6. Okay, and can I get a seconder for that motion? Seconded. Thank you, Councillor <coughs> Fortune. Councillor McRae, would you like to comment on this one? Um, yes, I think it just outlines um, the appropriate times um, when flags, the flags are to be lowered, um, which order the flags are supposed to be flying in, and just gives everyone guidance on, on the rules and regulations, I guess. Thank you. Any other comments on this? All right, all those in favour? And that's carried. That takes us to item 10.3, which is the adoption of confidential the confidentiality policy. Would someone like to move the officer's recommendation? Uh, I'll move, Madam Mayor, that, that the confidential confidentiality policy six be adopted by council and that council delegate to the CEO the responsibility to classify council meeting reports and attachment and other information as confidential in accordance with section 1713 and 204 of the Local Government Act 2009. Thank you. Can I get a second for that motion? Okay. Thank you, Councillor McRae. Deputy Mayor, any comments on this one? Uh, no, thanks, Madam Mayor. Uh, it's um, a policy that's needed to determine um, which attachments and which parts of the um, agenda for Council is, is considered confidential and um, to be treated accordingly by councillors and, and um, administration alike. Um, and it, I'll just make the point that it's there to instill trust in people that we work with, contractors and with um, the broader public to, to know that we are treating information carefully. Thank you. Thanks, Deputy Mayor. 
Any other comments on this one? All right, all those in favour? And that's carried. And that takes us to the uh, item 11, which is the Corporate and Community Services Reports, and uh, item 11.1, .1, which is a finance overview report for March 2023. And I'll hand you over to the Deputy Mayor. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Uh, I'll, I'll move that Council receives and accepts the March 2023 Finance Overview Report as presented. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Can I get a seconder for that motion? Stratton. Thank you, Councillor Stratton. Uh, Deputy Mayor, would you like to speak on behalf of this report? Yeah, thanks, Madam Mayor. Um, as you can see, uh, the revised um, budget that we've done recently has, has come through into the figures now and it's, um, uh, things are lining up a lot better. Um, the present time, um, <coughs> We're, we're well on track with budget and we're um, ahead with the revenue by a considerable amount, but that, that uh, is normal for this time of the year and will be taken up as we go forward to June uh, 30, um, due, mainly due to the fact that, that all the uh, rates have been issued um, and, you know, the, the revenue from other sources has been, is, has been realised or will be realised over the next couple of months. Um, you can see that the uh, expenditure is um, pretty close to budget um, and it's not far away from it. Uh, the only thing that's really outstanding, I'll point out, is the water dividend, which has been factored in at, at a certain amount of money, about three million, and um, uh, we're waiting for that to be realised between now and the end of the year, financial year, to, um, to uh, and that figure will determine where, we, where our bottom line ends up. Um, Going forward, um, just uh, moving on to the outstanding rates, um, we can see that there's uh, nearly 27 million there that's um, now um, outstanding, of which 19.3 uh, million are um, not yet due, uh, so they're in the process of being paid. The uh, amount over um, uh, 31 days into 300 and over 366 days arrears is still significant. It's sitting around um, 8 million, and uh, I think uh, you know the, the sooner we can we can do more work on that, the better. But I understand that things are in process uh, within the financial um, team. Uh, nothing much else there except to note that the um, uh, the. Summary of loans um, is down now to 17.6 million um, as at the 31st of March. Um, so that's uh, it's quite a low number in terms of um, what we'd expect council borrowings to be generally across the state. So um, quite comfortable with that. Uh, and the unrestricted cash is sitting at uh, close to 44 million. Thanks very much. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Any other comments on this report? Um, yeah, I'd just like to thank Shalaya. A few months ago I asked um, for the explanatory notes to be added in. So the explanatory notes are there, but she's also included um, the little section or picture of the budget that the notes relate to, which makes it really easy to read and you don't have to go back and forward between pages. So thank you very much for that, Shalaya. Good job. Thank you, and yes, well said. Any other comments? All right, all those in favour? And that's carried. That takes us now to 11.2, which is the Splashes Overview Report for March 2023, and I'll hand you over to Councillor Coughlin. Um, I'd like to recommend that Council receives and accepts the March 2023 Splashes Overview Report as presented. Thank you, Councillor Coughlin. Can I get a seconder for that motion? Seconded, Fortune. Thank you, Councillor Fortune. Councillor Coughlin, would you like to speak on behalf of this one? Yeah, I'd just like to ask some questions through the Chair. With the... Um, Month of March 23 compared to 22, there's some significant um, cost difference. So I just like with the like chlorine and chemical costs, it's about halved. Uh, same as maintenance and running costs. I thought uh, like something like that should be kept round about the same, wouldn't it? Like, like, are we not cleaning the pool as much now? That's the numbers why. are down. Hey? The numbers are about half. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. The pool still needs to be cleaned and, and looked after it in the same manner. 
the like, more the more people that are using it, the, the probably more chlorine you'd have to use. Yeah, more chlorine, but still. Couldn't it be just that someone they bought bulk chlorine in in February and they don't need to buy more until June? You know that sort of thing because bulk is definitely cheaper. So it's not as if you're going to buy chlorine every month. No, well, I just think it it should be well. Your maintenance and running costs is halved, and rates and charges we there's an extra fifteen thousand in March two thousand twenty three compared to March twenty twenty two. Why would that what why would that be? I don't understand. To uh, Madam Mayor, I separately answer the question on rates and charges. That's just a cost attribution internally, I would have thought. Um, the only uh, thing I can think of in terms of the running costs is the, is the closure of the pool due to the greater wet weather in March of this year compared to the year before. Um, yes, the pool would still be chlorinated and operated, but um, less investment in, in particularly in chlorination when the pool's closed and not being utilised. So uh, Steve might have something to add to that. And I just note in the notes that of that maintenance and running costs, uh, it's noted there that Coogee Chemicals chlorine's three thousand seven hundred and forty, which um, means it's in the wrong spot and should be in the in the chlorine chemical costs, and that would bring it back to a par. But the uh, maintenance and running cost doesn't actually seem to accord with the details under the table, so that just might need to be checked. There's a little asterisk, is there? Yep. But it appears the chlorine is line bore because it's been put under running costs rather than chlorine. Okay. Rightio, yeah, thank you for that. Thanks, Stephen. Any other comments? All right, all those in favour? And that's carried. And that takes us to item 11.3, which is the Corporate Services Overview Report for February and March 2023. And I'll hand over to Deputy Mayor. Yeah, thanks, Madam Mayor. Uh, I'll move that Council receives and accepts the Feb. February uh, 2023 and March 2023 Corporate Services Overview Report as presented. Thank you. Can I get a seconder for that motion? Seconded. Thank you, Fortune. Councillor Fortune. Dep Deputy Mayor, would you like to speak on behalf of this? Uh, thanks, Madam Mayor. Just that the uh, administration team are very busy in corporate services there. The, um, the calls received is, is quite significant. Um, uh, 2,659 um, going through the office. Um, which is, uh, I guess, is related a lot to um, the issue of rates and, and um, you know, the the uh, amount of rain that we had and the, you know, the the call for repairs to various things around the around the parks and the <coughs> roads and that. So um, you can see a significant jump there from February, which was only 1,700 calls, um, an additional thousand calls taken. So that's they're they're certainly um, keeping busy. Um, Otherwise, I think everything's fairly steady um, in terms of um, the jobs being taken and um, the jobs being dealt with. So um, it is a busy little part of the operation. Thank you. Any other comments? Yeah, through the chair, just like um, if the CEO could pass on my thanks to the local laws department, because I know I've put in quite a lot of eye cases about yards um, overgrown and uh, they have been attended to. So I, I know. I have put in quite a lot and a lot of people do report them to me as well but um, just let people know that they can run, ring Mount Isa City Council and report it themselves if they have a yard that's overgrown because it does become a, a health and a, and a fire hazard. So if you could just pass on my thanks to them, I'd appreciate it. Thank you, Councillor Coughlin. And uh, yeah, I, I, uh, if you have uh, neighbours that are exhibiting antisocial behaviour and you're making complaints, by all means, we have a complaints email, which you can, which is complaints at mountiser.qld.gov.au. So by all means, put us in the complaint. All right, any other comments on this particular report? All those in favour? And that's carried. This one is a development and land use quarter three for overview report. And 
This one is Councillor Tully, I believe. Is that right? No, Councillor no. Fortune. Sorry, Councillor Fortune. Through the Chair, <coughs> I'll uh, move the recommendation that Council receives and accepts the development and land uses uh, sections quarter three uh, overview report. Thank you, Councillor Fortune. Uh, can I get a seconder for that motion? Stratton. Thank you, Councillor Stratton. Councillor Fortune, would you like to speak on behalf of this? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll just give a, a brief summary. Uh, during the uh, second quarter, Council received uh, seven development applications, approved five. Uh, the uh, building applications, a total of 20 notice of engagements were received by Council. Uh, a total of 22 building approvals were issued by uh, private building certifiers for that quarter. Um, there's uh, 22 building approvals uh, as a, and a total of 36 structures. Uh, the total value of building works approved from Mount local government area for this quarter was uh, 7.02 million. Uh, which is an increase of uh, 3.61 million compared to the same quarter of the last financial year. So uh, things are ticking over in, in the city, which is good to see, um, and those development applications uh, are coming through. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Fortune. Any other comments on this report? Uh, just a question, Madam Mayor. There's a telecommunications facility in um, Richardson Road. Um, uh, I just wonder. Um, is that related to the um, mobile towers? Yeah, does anyone know? The mobile phone towers? It's on page 90. There was uh, originally a plan to install a tower at Buchanan Park, but th this may be the same one, but it's been put in a different location. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Just <coughs> sorry, through the chair, I, I just come across that um, development application there on 15 Breakaway Drive. That that is probably a conflict of interest because I, I know who that is, and probably Councillor Stratton probably has too. Yeah. But I know too. We might relate. No, but I mean we. Yeah, that's my um, son-in-law's place and my place of residence at the moment. I think because we're not passing in ink here, it's only a review, I don't think I really have a conflict. We're not deciding on any matters. I'd agree there through the chair. It's um, the recommendation that it receives and accepts the development land use sections quarter um, report. Um, the section is dealing with those um, uh, development applications and uh, we're just accepting the report that they've given us. Well, Everyone happy with that? Yeah, just uh, um, uh, just one question. The old SES block, d d can we get some clarification on what's happening with that or what's going on with it, please? Can we, can we give it to Man the show? I thought they yeah, were taking up the lease. I think yeah. yeah, because nothing's yeah. happened to it. I was just wondering w w what is happening. Oh. I thought we gave it to Man of the Show. Yeah, we did. Well, from last report we did, but n nothing's changed there. So I was just wondering if... <coughs> Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other comments? No. All right, all those in favour? And that's carried. And now that takes us to item three. It's a bit slow for me today. Uh, 11.5, which is a sublease of Police Citizens Youth Club, PCYC, uh, 67 Isa Street, Mount Isa. Would someone like to move the officer's recommendation? I'd like to move the recommendation that Council resolves to one, enter into a, a new sublease agreement with the Mount Isa Police Citizens Youth Club, two, allow the new sublease area to be extended to include the current pl Police Citizens Youth Club use area, uh, area to be surveyed by a qualified surveyor. And three, uh, delegate to the Chief Executive Officer to the authority to finalise all matters in relation to the sublease agreement. 
Thank you, Councillor Fortune. Any comments, or would you like uh, would you like to make a comment on this one? Oh, sorry, I need a seconder. Need second, uh, I'll second. <laughs> right I don't know why I did that. Um, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Seconder. Back to you, Councillor Fortune. Any, thank you, um, uh, Deputy Mayor. Um, just a little background there. Uh, a lot is a freehold uh, land owned by Mount Isa Mines Limited, and our council leases a lot from the mines, and that uh, uh, the sublease is a portion of that land, uh, and uh, and forms a uh, uh, that land actually forms a couple of uh, lots, which is uh, the family fun park precinct is part of it. Um, the uh, Mount Isa PCYC uh, provide a variety of on-site and youth outreach programs, including but not limited to uh, a 24-7 gym access and fitness facility, uh, Tai Chi, uh, outside school hours care program and meeting rooms. Uh, the PCYC's current 21-year sublease agreement is due to expire on 30th of December uh, 2023 and the renewal of the sublease is requested by the PCYC. Um, as a youth centre, uh, the lease area is well situated in close proximity to the skate park, splashes and the family fun park precinct. Thank you, Councillor Fortune. Any other comments on this one? Yeah, thanks, Madam Mayor. Uh, look, uh, I think this is a, um, um, you know, they, they do a very good job there, Mount Isa Police Citizens Youth Club, and I think, uh, you know, they've, they're really ingrained and a good part of the community. Um, I, I just wonder uh, if the lease being considered is, uh, there's no reference to here, but I assume it's, it's going to be a similar to the previous one, another 21-year sublease. Yeah, yeah I, I think that would be warranted. It's... Um, you know, it's very well established. It's a good, good facility, modern facility. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. All right. If there's no more questions, all those in favour? And that's carried. And that brings us to item 11.6, which is a library overview report for February, March 23. And I'll hand over to you, Councillor McRae. Um, I'd like to move that Council receives and accepts the February 2023 and March 2023 library overview report as Thank you, Councillor McRae. Can I get a seconder for that motion? Stratton. Thank you, Councillor Stratton. Councillor McRae, would you like to speak on behalf of this one? Um, yeah, I would. All the usual um, programs have still been operating at the library. You'll notice we've got a, a security guard at the entrance now to meet and greet people and make sure everyone, um, I guess, is safe and carrying on appropriately there. At the library, um, probably the highlight for last month was um, Lois and I attending the forum that we got the bursary for to attend in Brisbane, the Future Libraries Conference. And as mentioned earlier, I'll be bringing a report back to Council on that. Thank you, Council McRae. Any questions on this report? Or comments? No? All right, all those in favour? And that's carried. And that takes us to item 11.7, which is the Economic Development Overview Report for March 23, and I'll hand you back to Council McRae. Um, I'd like to move that Council receives and accepts the March 2023 Economic Development Overview Report as presented. Can I get, get a seconder for that motion? Second, Bali. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Councillor McRae, would you like to talk on behalf of this one? Um, yeah, probably the highlight of this one is um, the Economic Development Strategy. Um, we've all had input to that. We've seen the draft version come back and we're just waiting for it to be um, completed before it goes out to um, show the community for some consultation. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Yeah, through the chair, just on the Mine, Walk, Mine Workers Memorial Committee, um, it's saying here uh, that um, from the meeting on the 22nd, we were waiting on the... Uh, concept designs and the geotech report for the hill but in passing this are we saying just to the CEO are, are we saying that that is where it is going to go because there are two sites where it can go they're advising us uh, I might allow Chalaya to speak to that we we discussed that administratively uh, two days ago um, my, under my understanding is that there was a decision taken as to a site um, and the master plan has been, is predicated on that approved site. However, I, I do recall the, mm -hmm. the, the view at a recent workshop that that, that might have been a, an alternative view as to a site, obviously. Absolutely. So well, through the chair... We're still uh, waiting on the geotech report. We actually yeah. did pass this in the council meeting. 
and it was waiting on the Yes, I understand report. that, but the... And the, the, the Geotech report did say that this, um, we were able to go ahead and now we're going through the... It also, stage. one thing that wasn't brought up at the advisory committee, and I think it's remiss of us as well, is the costings. It's going to, to cost to do this. But it's also got, it's gone through a council meeting, councillor. We, we've agreed on this. Oh. Just through the chair. Do you want me to put, do you want me to go and find the ordinary meeting and the, we, 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 oh, you, No, you I don't need that. This, no, I don't need that. All I'm saying is council needs to look at the costings of it before they make a informed decision. And that will include the geotech report as well when it comes to council. Council yeah, just through the chair, that's what, th that's what was passed. Mm -hmm. The cost w had to be some, some it, it, it hasn't been given the go-ahead. Mm -hmm. that, that's incorrect. Yeah. So, so the, the motion has been passed the green light. Yep. With, no, no, with the costs, the with the costs. Light. It was preferred, not It, it preferred. was preferred, but the costs in the GA uh, report. We're in control of the costs, aren't we? You know, we're obviously not going But we need to have an idea of what it's going to what cost. What it's going to cost. But that's where the, um, the plan comes into effect from the architect. Yeah, but also the, yeah. So We just need to know the whole costings. Yep. So, Councillor, just to reiterate, you, your comment is you're worried about the costing or you're worried about the site? Oh, both. both. Because, because of the site, the costings are going to be through the roof. Okay, so that, that argument you put forward and the motion still went through? No, I didn't put that argument through you, when the motion went through. I, I put it through to get on the table so that it could go forward with the geotech report. Yep, so we've moved on though. We have now yep. accepted the site. No, prefer, it was pending. a preferred site, pending costs and a geo and looking at the geotech report. Have we got the um, motion because I, I yeah. yep. It's um, through can the, I just, just oh. say one thing, Madam Mayor, at the end of the day, the council is gonna have to allocate money one way or another to, to make this thing happen if, and this issue will be revisited at that time because yep. you haven't committed to the funding. Yep. So that, in practical terms, it's all going to come back to that 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 reality at some future okay. point. Yep. Thank you. It's not even in the budget yet, is it? No. And I think everyone has agreed that we're, we were going to look for funding for this. You know, and uh, it wouldn't be a burden on the ratepayers. It would be we would look to the state and federal government for funding. Yeah, but again, it goes down to costings of how much it's going to cost to go to the site. And, and at the meetings, we, t we talked about this and talked about a staged approach, and that's what the architects are looking at, a staged approach, so it's not one lump sum, so yeah. we can do, you know... The yeah, what I'm saying, but, is the costings of the whole thing. Can we just go to Chile? She just got a hand up. Through the chair, I um, just wanted to just confirm to the councillors that, yes, there was two preferred sites. Uh, the concept designs were initially supposed to go on to Frank Aston, subject to a number of conditions. So we've received those um, concept designs. I will share them with the uh, councillors later today at the budget meeting. It also gives an indication of what the price or what the costings are for the site. I note that there was a request to uh, prepare concept designs for uh, George McCoy. However, the architects have come back with a budget variation or request for additional funding. So again, I'll bring that up at the budget discussions this afternoon if there's an appetite to take on second concept designs for a different site. But it will come at a cost. Through the chair. Yeah, look, uh, I, I would support that. I, I'm, I'm less and less, um, I've never been in favour of Frank Aston as a site. Um, I think it's very uncomfortable. Uh, it's going to ruin uh, work that we've already done there, which is the, uh, the RV car parking. Um, and I think um, the, the steering of this committee, the way it's going, is this, this thing is becoming bigger than Ben-Hur, and I'm, I'm hearing figures being flashed around of 14 and $15 million, which to me for a, a site such as this is, is pretty disrespectful. I, I would think we, we want something that's a little bit more low-key, a little bit more reserved and a little bit more in tune with the fact that we're a living and working mining town. And um, uh, I don't think we should be putting anything that, that has this um, great monumental status on a hill next to Kmart. Um, that is very uncomfortable, as I pointed out. But this is your opinion. And it is. And you and did it, bring your I'll opinion to that, to, yeah. to that meeting. And we still, uh, we had a committee that we invited from the public, which picked this location. We took it to a council meeting and we've agreed on this location via certain, no. um, you know, meeting certain that's, standards. That's correct. Um, and, and, but the, the thing is, and with local government is, 
we've put this motion through, it's in motion. I get you don't agree with it, but at some point you have to accept that, you know, we've got a committee that's put it forward, we've accepted it, <coughs> and now you're, there's a chance you're gonna um, burden us with some extra costs because you like another location. No, I'm trying to reduce costs for the ratepayer, um, and I agree with what you're saying. We did appoint a committee. However, what they've done since this, this endorsement is to build this great monumental thing or, or in concept, which I don't believe is, is suitable at all, and particularly at that location, but I think it should, be, it should be reduced right down to something a little bit more conservative and more fitting with the size of the town and the fact that we're a living, working, mining town. Uh, rather than this great monument that we're going to try and build on, on that very uncomfortable site. So that's what's happened since that resolution. Can I just point out too that there is a mistake on page 125 that it says that the resolution was on the 27th of April 2023 and it was actually, uh, I think that's meant to be 22. Um, just, to, just to correct yeah. that please. Thank you Deputy Mayor. Chaleva, did you want to add some more to that? Yeah, and look, uh, Deputy Mayor, your, your concerns are noted, and I think from the beginning, Councillor Coughlin and, and yourself have been against that site. But um, um, we're built on mining, and 150 lives have been lost in this mine, and a monumental site is, is exactly what we want as a community. And the, you know, I think those 22 people who are part of that um, advisory group are a good cross-section of the Mount Isa community. And you know, it was overwhelmingly voted for that particular spot. Uh, yes, I, I think they have agreed, we're in principle, that we will stage what happens there so it isn't a burden on ratepayers and that we go for funding at every opportunity. Um, George McCoy Park, to me, isn't, isn't an option. At the moment, it, it's full of people camping there. It, it, is, it, is, not a, it is not an option. And the, that, a mining site there with people sitting around drinking is just a slap in the face to everyone who has... Um, if you build something, them. people won't be sitting there drinking. Well, w they are. Say? They yeah. are. And why would Nothing's that stop them? The they're, they're not man the people. They wouldn't know what they're sitting around. That they, they they walk away with litter. It's 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 awful what's happening there. And don't get me wrong, it's happening in a, a Frank Aston and all round town. But um, uh, again, I've been going to these meetings now for nearly two years, and just to have everything, you know. Um, you know, brought rehashed again when we've gone through this process. It's really frustrating, and and I think. Um, if you want to bring it up at the next miners' memorial meeting, by all means do so. But uh, again, we've agreed on this, so it, it, to revisit it again, it doesn't make sense to me. Through the chair, look, I, the way I see an advisory committee is they should be working for council um, to do, you know, to give us advice on what, what's acceptable. Um, I, I believe this is becoming bigger than Ben Hur, and I think it needs to be toned down. I would like to see a concept design for. George McCoy Park, um, that's, that's much more reasonable. And I think um, yeah, you'll see some really good things there. Bring on Bigger and Ben Hur, I say, because at the moment we haven't had any great um, capital spent in Mount Isa. You know, there's no big thing here. Why not attribute to the mine and the people who work there and the people who lost their lives? And absolutely, um, I, I, I couldn't disagree with you more, Councillor. No one's been... No one's being disrespectful to the mine lives that have been lost, and certainly we need a miners' memorial. I agree entirely with that concept. It's this, it's this approach that um, makes it bigger than anything we have in town that I think is 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 not suitable at all. Um, we need to um, we really need to tone this down, keep the costs low as we can because it, it isn't a revenue gathering uh, facility, but it is a recognition of the lives that have been lost, and and I think a more respectful recognition would be good. Um, and, you know, there's other activities that we need to spend 14, 15 million dollars on, and I can rattle them all off, but the library, the Civic Centre, out back at ISO, we've got the motorsports park that we're looking at, and also work that we want to do at Lake Kundara Advisory Committee. If we, if we withdraw funding from a range of places, you know, in the, in the state government or the federal government, then that reduces our, our capacity to get more funding for other things that we're trying to do as well. Um, so th that's my point, thanks. Thank you, and uh, it's been a good discussion. Um, I, I 
completely disagree, obviously, and I think that we should be aiming for the stars and why shouldn't we be funded for the library at Bacadiza uh, CBD Master Plan, uh, the Miners Memorial? Absolutely, we should be going for everything we can. We shouldn't, we shouldn't just automatically concede that we won't get funding. We should just be going for everything, absolutely. Sure, can I say something? Sure, yes, yes, yeah, sure. Um, Madam Mayor, I think we, um, we have been applying for grants for government, for the MRF, the everything we do. And um, I think Ma uh, our Mount Isa as a community has been snobbed by um, the state and the federal government. We seem to get um, no money at all here. And I think um, what the, um, this will be one of them, the, you know, the memorial, you know, we, we're flat out getting a, a million dollars or a couple of million dollars to do a community centre. And, you know, they, if it's going to blow out to 10 million, uh, you know, it's going to, it's not going to happen because council haven't got the money to build it. The mines aren't going to give us any more money. You know, and I just, I just feel that we have been, um, you know, snobbed by the government on all grants. And just nothing seems to come through here. Yeah, through the chair, can I add to that? That sure. $1.3 million grant we got for the Country University Centre with the change of government, they said, no, you announced that too early, you won't be getting the full 1.3. So we've been trying to negotiate the cheapest price we can get just to get the university centre signed off on at less than 1.3 million. And that's something that will benefit this community going forward for such a long time. Absolutely. And um, I acknowledge that we are putting, uh, we have uh, a director coming in the economic development area, which may help us obtain more funding hopefully because I, I agree we um it would be good to see a lot more funding coming this way yeah through the chair madam man i mean i'm all for the miners memorial because yep. my, you know i've had friends that have been killed in the mine over yep. they want to work there and um you know if we can pull it back so we can get it to happen to fruition will be great for the town and to acknowledge those you know the hard-working people that have, have passed over there yeah yeah, and, and look, I've seen the plans, and it'd be great if you could come to the next Miners Memorial meeting. And it has, the, you know, the first stage is quite scaled back and isn't going to cost mm. millions, you know, well, eight million. You know, it is quite scaled part. And then, so this could be, you know, it could take 10 years to get where we want, maybe, maybe longer. But it, it's, if we start now, before you know it, it's done. You know, if we don't start, and it's the same with the, mo um, the motorsport complex, you know, people go 50 million don't even go there, but if we start small and keep chipping at it before you know it, we're there. That's but I, I do agree, Councillor Stratton, I think we've got to work a lot harder and maybe it's up to us to lobby more for funding. Mm. It, through the Chair, I think it's important to note for that resolution that was made uh, on uh, April 2022 that um, uh, the endorsement from Council on, for the consultation report um, is uh, subject to those uh, following uh, items there, and, and that one is the concept and detail design, and um, you know I, I don't think we have a full full view uh, or a full picture of that. So um, yeah. I think the uh, uh, the thought that it's a, a done deal is is not correct. I think that uh, we need to look more at the concept and detail design. And also the um, options that um, you know that went away from George McCoy Park, and I respectfully disagree with your um, assumption that mm -hmm. that is not a good place for it. I think it's probably a, a better place because of its location. Um, the issue I have with uh, Frank Instant Hill is that um, the production costs or the construction costs there will be significant, um, and I, I don't want that impost put onto our community. Um, the other issue there is that the um, RV parking and caravan parking for the for tourists is uh, where it's very close to the CBD uh, will be uh, taken away. So uh, I have a, uh, a few issues with that site, but um, as I said, uh, the subject to the concept and detailed design, I think um, uh, a final decision has not been made. So uh, yeah. we need to have a look, bit more of a closer look at that. In the future. Councillor, did you come along to the architect's briefing for the site? I think it was sent out to us. I attended it. Yeah. Did you not see, did, did you attend that one? Yeah, we've, we've got 
plan sent out to us. Yeah. And overlays. Yeah. But and and no, it was good no, to, get, to go along with the architect there because they really broke it down and 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 um and you really did have options on you can do this, can do that, to the other. And I know we we're all invited, but I guess it's important that we um you know we take a good hard look at this because I, I know some councillors are locked in. Right? I'm not keen on this location and maybe have switched off when you've really got to come in and let's, let's exhaust this now. We're already so far in. Let's exhaust what we can do there before we, um, you know, I'll, turn I'll off. Through Chair, I'll just go back to my statement. You know, the resolution uh, was subject to those followings and uh, that includes the concept and detailed design and that includes costs around it too as well, which um, we don't know. Yeah, and I guess we haven't, um, so I always took it that it was cost to council, but you're saying you're worried, is, is the general feeling the cost is if we take a grant for $8 million for this project, then another project won't get up? Is that what you're scared of? No, my concern yeah. is, is is cost, obviously, uh, and, and it doesn't state in their cost, which, I mean, but. Council of Fortune alluded that the concept and detailed design m may include costs, but I mean, cost is one thing. It's it's ongoing costs as well. You just can't just look at a project. Whole life I mean, costs. the Buchanan Park is is a perfect example. I mean, yeah, and that's one of the things uh, I've mentioned to the architect is whole life costs, mm. especially with vegetation. You know, the well, damage. Important. You know, I mean, you know, all, all those things. Yeah. And through the chair, I can't see myself supporting and um, anything that's going to rip up, you know, a million dollars worth of work that we spent last term. So I'm happy to look at the designs, but I I would not like to see that RV car park removed because it was at a considerable cost and it is only new. Okay. Well. Yeah. Um, oh, just keep moving on. Uh, luckily, the uh, this motion is only to accept the the minutes. Uh, true and accurate account of um, that meeting, so we don't have to make any decisions on that particular um, advisory committee or the location. But it was a good debate, and it's good to have these debates um, at these meetings where you know this is a place to have it. Is there any other comments now with this report? Uh, thanks, Madam Mayor. Um, <coughs> Just on the motorsports, um, the feasibility report is, um, has been doing the rounds and it's um, going back to the um, GHD, the uh, consultants now, to be finalised. And there was a lot of elements there that were um, uh, looking at the Taj Mahal, so that's been cut right back to, to what's more suitable for the town. Um, and that should be coming out very, very soon. Thank Thanks. you, Deputy Mayor. Any other comments on this report? Everyone happy? All right. All those in favour? And that's carried. And now that brings us to the Community Development Overview Report for March 2023. And I'll hand you over to Councillor McCrae. Um, I'd like to move that Council receives and accepts the March 2023 Community Development Overview Report as presented. Thank you, Councillor McCrae. Can I get a seconder for that motion? Seconded, Fortune. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Fortune. Councillor McCrae, would you like to speak on behalf of this? Um, yes, I'd just like to make note of the um, two big events we've got coming up, Anzac Day. Um, obviously, we'll be coming up on the 25th of April, dawn service at 6 a.m. and the morning service at 10 a.m. at the Cenotaph, <laughs> out front here. Um, also, our 100-year reunion dinner is um, our next big 100-year event coming up on the 6th of May. I understand tickets are selling quite well and it's um, going to be a really terrific night, so I'd encourage everyone to get on and um, grab a ticket if you're thinking of coming along so you don't miss out. Thank you, Councillor McRae. Any um, comments on this one? All right. All those in favour? And that's carried. That takes us to item 11.9, which is a MICO, MICO March uh, 23 quarterly report. And I'll hand you over to the Deputy Mayor. Uh, thanks, Madam Mayor. I'll move that Council receives and accepts the MICO March 2023 quarterly report as presented. Can I get a seconder for that motion? 
Seconded, Fortune. Thank you, Councillor Fortune. Deputy Mayor, would you like to speak on behalf of this report? Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, the uh, report is um, for the quarter ending in uh, March 31, um, just outlining the activities uh, for the outback at ISA, and, and this is a uh, document provided to the shareholder being council. Uh, just outlines work on the mine tour business, the um, uh, the new the fossil tourism business, and also the the uh, newly ramping up indigenous tourism business, um, which is um, going very very well. Um, so there's an outline there of the uh, how we're travelling to budget, and um, also a couple of the other add-ons that we're doing, such as the um, uh, the photographic exhibition, the 100 years photographic exhibition that's been put on by Brian Adamson in the um, uh, in the gallery there, so uh, that's that's uh, getting a lot of um, good remarks, good reviews, um, and yeah, just some other activities that council take care of, and some additions that we've done. So have a good read. Thanks very much. Have to take any questions? Uh, just one. Um, you're getting fencing put up. When does that look look like happening? Uh, okay, so um, there's. Um <coughs> There's some folks around, and I think we're budgeting for that um, in the next um, few weeks with um, the council budget, as I understand it. So we're um, looking at, at ways of um, setting that up so that it, it you know, blends in with the, um, the facility, but also does the job that we need it to do. And the security guard, when does that take? Uh, I believe that's um, in hand. Uh, I'm not sure exactly when he's starting, but I can find that out for you and get back to you. But um, that, that's in hand, yeah. Thank you. Any other questions on this report? Yeah, through the chair, I'd, I'd uh, like to um, uh, uh, pass on my congratulations to um, our new manager, um, Martin, uh, Martin Turner. Uh, he's introduced a few uh, initiatives into the um, outback at ISA that has um, you know, uh, um, really vamped up, I, I guess, the um, and changed up the uh, the menu at the Outback at Isa Cafe, but also uh, with the in Indigenous tour tourist business too as well. Uh, there's a uh, the Bush Tucker experience um, where you have um, Indigenous guides and uh, explaining how the Bush Tucker is uh, collected and cooked, um, and that has been very well received by tourists. So um, that's a good initiative, and uh, it's uh, great to see it's ongoing. Uh, into the future and the uh, engagement with the staff who have uh, welcomed it too as well. It's uh, great to see. Any other comments? Yeah, I'll just mention too, Madam Mayor, um, it's outside the the uh, period of this report, but the uh, there was an incident with uh, some maintenance needing to be done at the Hard Times Mine, so it's presently closed and undergoing some urgent repairs um, so that we can open it back up to tourists again. Uh, that seems to be travelling along in the right direction, and um, uh, we we're hoping that it'll be back open before the end of April. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Okay. All those in favour? That's carried. That takes us now to item 11.10, which is a request for support. For Through the, the chair, Madam Mayor, because um, I was late to the meeting, I've got a prescribed interest in this one. I'm president of the Mount Isa Touch Association and they lease Krishnan Oval, so um, I'll be stepping out for this. Thank you, Councillor. I have sponsored this before, um, so, but I mean, I've got no, no issue with staying. I mean, if people want me to go, I'll go. Are you sponsoring it this time? No. Okay. I think that, should, that, should, that shouldn't affect it. <coughs> Okay, would someone like to move the officer's recommendation? I would. I'd like to move that council approves financial assistance in the value of $3,000 to Gecko Outdoor, Outdoor Sports Proprietary Limited in support of the 2023 Superhero Scramble. Can I get a seconder for that motion? Seconded, Fortune. Thank you, Councillor Fortune. Any comments on this one? Um, no, I just think it's a, it's a great event um, and it's great to see people in our community getting out and getting active. Thank you. All right. All those in favour? And that's carried. Can we get Councillor Cogwood back in? May I suggest uh, Councillor Stratton dress up? Superhero. Oh, I don't <laughs> think they'll find one big enough. <laughs> <laughs> OK, 
Okay, so that puts us now into yeah, item 11.11, .11, which is a request for financial assistance for the Manizer Tourism Association. Would someone like to move the officer's recommendation? I'll move it uh, for discussion, Madam Mayor, that Council provides uh, financial support to the Mount Isa Tourism Association to the value of up to $1,800 to support a representative to attend the Sydney camp Caravan and Camping Show on the 18th to the 23rd of April 2022, subject to the following conditions. Uh, one is to provide quotations for travel and accommodation costs to the satisfaction of Council, um, two, acquittal of previous funding to the satisfaction of the Council, Acknowledgement of support at the Sydney Caravan and Camping Show to the satisfaction of Council and promote upcoming 100 years events at the Sydney Caravan and Camping Show to the satisfaction of Council. Can I get the seconder for that motion? Seconded, Fortune. Thank you, Council Fortune. Deputy Mayor, would you like to speak on behalf of this one? Uh, Madam Mayor, um, there, there appears to be some issues with uh, previous um, funding for this um, particular uh, um, event. Um, so I'm just I'm not haven't quite got a handle around it, but I assume I think it's. Um, uh, around the acquittal of the funding or and um, and the determination of the value of the um, the actual event for in relation to council's efforts there um, so I'd have to um, um, just take try and try and open up discussions about that if we can thanks I think um, from what I can gather our our documentation didn't turn up when so we, we sponsored it and we were supposed to send out you know, pamphlets and things to hand out, and it just never turned up. But I think um, they they um, did get in contact and said they had a lot of brochures of Mount Isa and they were promoting and getting people to sign up so they could send them information on the 100 years and other events. I think that was, is it, am I talking about the right one? That they, yeah, yeah. So uh, at the, we didn't give them the stuff that they were gonna hand out for us. So for whatever reason, I'm, I'm thinking I'm talking about the right event because I'm pretty sure I put them back onto you, Chilea, and said I'll have a ch chat with Chilea on that. Yeah. So it's just from my understanding, reading that, that the the acquittal hasn't been done. No. Yeah. So that I'm not. I, so that's got nothing to do with us ha handing out forms, though. Oh no no no! I, I thought that's what the deputy oh. mayor was getting to about the value. Yeah. Well, um, of the just, um, product. Yeah. Okay. No. Um, the acquittal. I, I have no idea about the quiddle. I'm not involved in any of that, and I'm, I'd say it's an admin. Yeah, well, I mean, as, as far as I'm concerned, if they haven't acquitted last year, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'm not in support of it. So. Yeah. So, sorry, Chile, you go so ahead. Through the chair, this came in as a late submission. We did work with the applicant just to make sure that they could get it on time, so it should have come last month. Unfortunately, there were some delays with the applicant. However, they, ha they haven't done the acquittal for the last round of funding that they received for the last um, show that they went to. So that's why this recommendation is subject to them providing that acquittal. Yeah. Through the chair, yeah, sure. Madam Mayor. Um, uh, for $1,800 uh, to um, promote Mount Isa um, and the conditions provided there, I think that council has covered ourselves pretty well there and um, I am all for any sort of um, acknowledgement of uh, Mount Isa City Council and also Mount Isa City and, and our local government area as a, as a tourist destination. Um, I think the conditions have covered uh, all of our uh, um, uh, bases as far as the uh, recommendation goes. Um, you know, if they don't provide those acquittals uh, and promote and acknowledge correctly, um, you know, to our satisfaction, um, I think uh, uh, you know they they won't get the eighteen hundred dollars. But for the purposes of the uh, recommendation, um, I think that uh, uh, we've pretty much covered what we want to see from the uh, association. Uh, having someone uh, promoting Mount Isa uh, at a at a um, national event um, will, will is well worth the eighteen hundred dollars. So, um, with the conditions and uh, the the amount, I think um, I, I will be uh, uh, supporting the recommendation. Any other comments on this? Yeah, um, it's from the eighteenth, so that was yesterday. Okay. 
Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Through the chair, did they take the paper stuff that they got it? They did not last time. Yeah. Yeah. The, it, yeah, they have. It's, there's too much shit here. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway. You know, through the chair, put it through. I, I feel like we've turned down a lot of people for funding for less than not having something acquitted from the previous year. I think if that had have been acquitted um, satisfactorily, that would be a completely different situation. Yeah, I agree. I just think I need to apply the rules consistently. I guess my thoughts are if we sent someone down ourselves, we'd be out of pocket way more than 1800 and every opportunity we have to promote Mount Isa across the nation is, is uh, and it could be, if, so, if there is another group that's ha happy to promote us and we can do it reasonably, it's a really good outcome. Yeah. I, I, um I agree it's probably um, cheap, but I mean that's not the that's not the consideration. The consideration is they haven't followed the process, so therefore you know, it shouldn't be passed. That's my opinion. Anyway, put it to vote and let's comments? go. <laughs> I, I guess I'm I'm saying that um, I'm comfortable with the fact that it will be acquitted and it could be as much as people not understanding um, local laws, acts and policies, you know, which can be quite tricky. Or just not signing off on a form. Yeah. Sorry, uh, so through the chair, so have we got any um, detailed of what they're going to do? or Because it says, I mean, they're going to promote 100 year events. So have, have we been told what they're going to promote? or? I mean, I'm just concerned that we're handing out money and we've got no detailed scope of what they're going to do. Um, uh, there's only summary details. A summary information on page obviously 150. So whether they actually have a stall as people are passing through a pavilion doesn't say that. Yeah. I'd imagine that that would be... And I'd say, look, the high... Some of the biggest tourist events in Mount Isa are council owned. You know, Outback at Isa, for one, is a council owned entity. And when people come here, they definitely, you know, utilise that facility. And, you know, <coughs> if it helps bring in tourism, and I mean, we prop up the tourist industry by how much? $1.7 million? So, you know, um, that's ratepayers' money. We're propping up an industry. We really need to have it advertised. Otherwise, why why do we do bother? You know, and uh, anyway, we can advertise it, and um, you know, our name being mentioned is is always a good thing. That's my thoughts. Yeah. My reservation is that the Sunset Tourism Park will be the the, the big winner here, not um, Mount Isa City Council. I'm not sure about that reference, but. Um, any other comments? Well, that's my opinion, I'm s is, is, and, and I've gave my opinion. Whether or not that you accept it is, is, is your choice, but th that's my opinion. Yeah. No, that's what I mean. I'm not sure what your reference is to. Well, it says in the report. So y your reference is that you think they'll only rep promote their own business? If you have a look at the risk... Yep. Oh, implications. Okay. It yep. states Sunset Tourism Park. Yeah, I know that, but I, 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 I think. Um, so, so I wasn't the only one that was thinking that. Oh. Whoever wrote the report obviously thought about it too. I, I think people who work in the tourist in industry, though, are the most passionate about tourism, and that's why they they work in the tourism industry. So you, you know, you may be can be negative to think they'll only look after their own patch of dirt, but of course they they know if they want people to come and stay with them, there has to be a product out there for them to come. To, so they're not going to come and stay in your venue without coming to um, Outback at Isa and going to the underground um, hospital museum and uh, you know doing all the things Man Isa has to offer. So it's to their benefit to off offer a great product out there to get, because we all know it's so expensive to get to Mount Isa. Um, for them just to pat, um, promote their own patch of dirt would be, doesn't, I just don't think they would. I think they would be, you know, and, and the people I've talked to in, in tourism talk about it all the time. They're just very passionate.
But anyway. Yeah, no, that's fair call. Um, what we need to look at is a recommendation, and if those all, all, all those four points have been covered, I've got no problem with giving the money. Yeah. But at this stage, not one of them has been done. So. No, and and your opinion's valid. Um, you know, you have the right to have that opinion. Don't worry. Um, okay. Well, let's. If there's no more comments, are all those in favour? Oh no. So can we um, do a is it division? We record. Yeah, we could yeah. do a division. Yeah. So two two votes. So it's it's Mayor Slade and Councillor Fortune four, and then and then against. I'll call out the name. That's okay. the original um, division. Yep. So Councillor McRae, Councillor Stratton, Councillor Tully, Councillor Coglin, and Deputy Mayor uh, against. <coughs> Yeah, can, can, can I just have it noted that those recomm those four points in the recommendation haven't been met, and therefore that's the reason why I'm voting against. Because I mean, there's been some talk about this this may come at a later date, yeah. but that's not what I'm arguing. Um, we can do that. It's not it's not a regular practice to describe what each counts the, re the rationale by for an individual. Okay, case. no, that's right. Just okay, I'll just vote against it. Then. Yeah. Fine. Just that, and it is live streamed, so if they check, they could see your point of <coughs> view. So Chair, there is an alternative there. recommendation there down the bottom to cover that, if that ship hasn't already sailed. In fact, the money's not reimbursed until all of the previous can be undone, including the acquittal of the one from the year last before. Year. Yeah, well, no, we've got some, we've yeah. something's already on the table. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we've actually voted. Yeah, so you've, you've voted, yeah. the motion is lost. Yep. Now you need a, probably put an alternative, and in putting the alternative, um, no. don't well, need to, but if we wanted to put the, no, no, we will, the, the second resolution, then you could put some reasons. To yeah, well, I'd be happy to um, concur with uh, Councillor McRae if all those things are met, um, those four recommendations have been met um, I've got no problem with reimbursing um, you know once the acquittal has been done for the previous years as well as this year would someone like to move the alternative recommendation um, I'd like to move that council provides financial support to Mount Isa Tourism Association for the value of up to 1800 to support the representatives to attend Sydney caravan and camping show on the 18th to the 23rd of April 2023 subject to the following conditions provide quotations for the travel accommodation costs to the satisfaction of council acquittal of previous funding to the satisfaction of council acknowledgement of support for sydney caravan and camping show to the satisfaction of council promote upcoming 100 year events at the sydney caravan camping show to the satisfactory um satisfaction of council and i'm not sure what the wording in there changes it to um once those are completed that the finances will be reimbursed at a later date at a later date can we just add that in? Yep. As, as well as the acquittal from the previous. Yeah, it's got that in there. That. Yeah. That's in there. Yeah. And, the, and the acquittal from this one? Yeah. Yep. And can we add the acquittal to the... Um, Be, because it's, yeah. a, it's past tense, because it's yeah. over by the time. So you want acquittal for two of them, this one, the 2023, yep. and also the 2022. She's pretty much done one, one very similar, but with the addition. It's the same wording. It's the same the wording, same except the, the addition is, um, what was the last bit? That, um, it, that the $1,800 will be reimbursed once those conditions have been met, along with the acquittal for the 2023. Um, 22. No, no, the 20. 2022, I think, is already covered oh, okay, in there cool. previous, yep. as, long, as well as the acquittal for the 2023 camping show. Okay. Caravan and Camp Expo. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, it's an interesting one. You, effectively, if you've made a decision and you've putting, they're putting a, a, a fresh resolution, which is largely the same resolution, it's a matter of judgment, you can't do it. Oh, um, okay. So uh, we just have to think it through. But if, if you're all accepting of the difference between what was just put and lost, and something which just, is yeah. largely the same, and you, and you carry it, you know, I think we just move on. I'm not in agreement of either motion. I won't be voting for either no, motion. Not, I yeah, I either recommendation, sorry. 
I just feel in good conscience I couldn't approve something that's not acquitted when we've turned it down so many times before. But if it does get acquitted, then that would be the difference for me. It should have been acquitted already. Perhaps already. a way, if I may, to, Madam Mayor, just to think about an option here. Uh, perhaps you indicate you're prepared to reconsider the funding subject to receipt of an acquittal, so we receive it, assess it, and then we come back to you and you make a decision. Well, we haven't given the money, so I mean, I'm happy with that. I mean, that's just a way of dealing, practical way, I think. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I'd be happy with that. And, and okay. you know, they, I guarantee they're sitting down there now promoting us. You know. And you could even put a date to it. You know, well, you receive, yeah. receive an acquittal mm. by the end of the calendar month. <coughs> sure. And it's got to be satisfactory. Mm. So, it, so the words would be something like, subject to, uh, if, if the council receives a, a satisfactory acquittal relating to the previous year by the 30th of April, it, is, it will reconsider the matter and then just take it to the next meeting and... Yeah, through the Chair, there's, there is that matter of process that everyone else is required to do as well. So um, if that, if that um, suggestion is going to go forward, I, I think that the... Um, uh, reminder uh, that, that uh, they need to follow the process the same as everyone else does to as well because I, I do think that's important as well. Um, I think uh, in this case uh, the um, benefit uh, probably outweighed the cost but um, I think as a, as a matter of process they need to be reminded oh. and prompted to follow the right correct process next time as well. Yes, because if they had have been in time for the community um, grants and benefits, they wouldn't have got up anyway because it wasn't acquitted. And if you actually read in the you can't apply for because you're not a community group. No, yeah, that's what they're saying. Yes, yeah, not. Great, Kath, it's been good call. Okay, well, um, <laughs> we'll. Uh, Comfortably re Sorry. just restate and set it away. <laughs> sort of end up a bit of a mess, but anyway, let's. Yep, so, Good on you, Pete. so the thoughts behind this are we are going to um, follow up with this to be acquitted, and if it is acquitted, we will put it through the next council meeting for reimbursement. Yep. Yes. Okay, so that's where we're left on that one. And that's by the end of April. So if I'd, I'd have a resolution to that effect. Would someone like to put that resolution forward? I can recite something again just for... Clarity. Yeah, can you do it and I'll okay. pull it up. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, well, I'm, I'm a bit woozy today, so bear with me. Um, and I can't hear myself talk. Uh, the council advised the Mount Isa Tourism Association that it will... Um, uh, it requires the receipt of a satisfactory acquittal for the previous financial year by the end of... by the 30th of April, 2023, and subject to... This occurring, it, it is prepared to reconsider uh, its su financial support of the 2023 um, uh, attendance at the Sydney Caravan and Camping Show at its next council meeting. All right, so, Councillor Teller, you're moving that motion. Would someone like to second that motion? Yes, Councillor McRae? Do we need the word retrospectively in there? And just before you go, Councillor Tully, all those in um, favour? <laughs> all right. Did you want your... I'm against. Can I have my name noted, please? So, um, Councillor Coggle wants her vote recorded as against. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Well, that moves us on to now 11.12, which is the RAD 22-23 Round 2 funding. Would someone like to move the officer's recommendation? Uh, thanks, Madam Mayor. I'll move uh, that Council endorses the RADF Committee recommendation to approve Barbara Sam to receive $1,900 under Round 2 of the 2022-23 RADF funding for her project NADOC for our elders and family. Can I get a seconder for that motion? Seconded, Fortune. Thank you, Councillor Fortune. Would you like to speak on behalf of this, Council Deputy Mayor? Yeah. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Uh, so Barbara Sam's a local Aboriginal artist. Um, her work's uh, quite well known around the community. I think uh, she delivers quality work um, with support. Um, her um, this particular project, she'll be working with young people at the Flexible Learning Centre um, and do work around their, their their individual family stories. So it ticks all the boxes for an RADF program in ter terms of um, uh, you know passing on learnings to young people and, um, you know, in the Indigenous and cultural heritage of the community. 
Um, so the, the finale for that will be the artwork will then be um, provided, um, displayed in a joint exposition, exhibition at Outback at Isa during, during NAIDOC week, uh, which is in July. So I, I'm supportive of the project, thanks. Thank you, do we have any other comments on this one or questions? No, okay, all those in favour? And that's carried. And that takes us to 11.13, which is the RAD Council Initiated Project True Country. Would someone like to move the officer's recommendation? Yeah, I'll move, Madam Mayor. Um, the, I'll move that the Council endorses the RADF Committee recommendation to support True Country as a Council Initiated Project during providing financial support to the value of up to $65,000, excluding GST. And the council provides in-kind support for traffic management at cost if required. Thank you. Can I get a seconder for that motion? McRae. Thank you, Councillor McRae. Uh, Deputy Mayor, would you like to speak on behalf of this yeah, one? Yeah, look, thanks, Madam Mayor. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll couch this uh, with an email from last night, but just to talk about the project itself. Um, the, uh, this is a fantastic event, I believe, um, and would be great for Mount Isa in terms of putting us um, on the state map. Um, and and it's, it's true recognition of, of our um, environment, of where we are, uh, country music, um, very, very popular here, and also um, giving an outlet for some of our amateur artists that are in the, in the region. Um, this is, uh, this is a, a fairly well-modelled, um, well, very well-modelled um, um, emerging talent program um, that I think would work wonders for um, Mount Isa, there's, there's uh, four communities involved, um, including Mount Isa, and the others are Roma, uh, Gladstone, and the fourth one escapes me. But uh, I think um, they, they go through all of these. They have a grand final in Gympie um, uh, from a, a person, um, you know, who wins a competition in each of those locations, the four locations, and... Um, they go through a grand final process to have, um, you know, the the eventual um, artist that, that wins the, the state uh, title for this particular country music event. Um, so, uh, you know, it ticks a lot of boxes for um, the RADF program in terms of, um, you know, bringing along um, local artists, um, being able to, they, they, they will be working with the schools and with local community groups to, to develop people and give people, um, um, you know, training and information on being able to develop their own auditioning tapes and, um, um, you know, basically getting into the music scenes as they need to. And, uh, yeah, so I think um, this, is a, this, this would give us, puts Mount Isa really on the map if um, this does go ahead. Uh, so I'll just add that last night they, uh, one of the core funding components to this was to come from the state government and uh, they've been rejected in the first round, so they'll be going back to apply for another round, um, so it may put the dates back that are actually mentioned in here, because we were hoping to get this to um, to happen uh, as early as September this year, um, to have the um, all the auditions and the uh, competition um, going ahead uh, in Mount Isa. Um, however, I, I'd, I'd suggest that we uh, quarantine the funds, um, and in fact, the, the funds won't be going anywhere unless the the whole program gets up. So. Um, I'd, I'd still like to move that um, we um, support this um, project and it also gives the uh, organisers the, uh, the collateral that they, uh, they have the communities on board with this particular project when they're, when they're submitting for the, the core funding for the whole program. Um, thanks, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Any other questions? Or, yep. um, yeah, I'd just like to add that um, it seems like a similar um, program to when we used to have the X Factor judges come up to do Outback Youth Has Talent mm. um, as part of the youth committee last term. Um, that was really popular, it just um, it was in August, so leading into rodeo, rodeo week, so it was a very busy time of the year. So I'm glad that the Deputy Mayor clarified that they were hoping to start in September because I expected I couldn't find that date anywhere in there. That's the question I was going to ask. So yeah, I think this is going to be, if it is in September and later in the year, I think this will... Um, be really popular and mm. I fully support it. Yeah, we'll have to go down and do it in school holidays because there's always a bit of a mass evacuation at a Manizer those two weeks. I think I think um, if we've got some keen country music people here that are wanting to participate, I'm sure they'll hang around to yeah. compete. It might just be crowds that it might be down a little bit. 
Yeah. Some of the discussions we've had with the Council of Officers just on that point is that they are considering all those aspects of, you know, the people leaving for school holidays and that sort of thing because they, they do want it to be a true success and they, they'll be in town, you know, the week before with a well-recognised country artist, um, uh, like an Australian title winner, for yeah. example, um, who yet to be determined. But um, they'll be working with the community and with the young people and the amateur artists as well. So, yeah, it's, it's a very, very well-articulated program. No, that mm. sounds good. And I think um, everyone will be encouraged by the success of Lane Pittman and think that they could probably follow that path. So I'm sure we'll have heaps of that. <coughs> yep, and we've definitely got a lot of talent in Manalyzer. There's no doubt about that. Okay, if there's no more comments, all those in favour? And that's carried. Or, or, or might even give it a go too, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> um, 11.14, which is rad. Council initiated project the mural on Ergon substation building. Would someone like to move the officer's recommendation? Okay, um, I'll move that Council endorses the RADF committee council initiated project to place a mural of the progress and prosper train on the former Ergon substation building on Railway Avenue. Can I get a seconder for that motion? Seconded. Thank you, Councillor Fortune. Deputy Mayor, would you like to speak on behalf of this one? Uh, thanks, Madam Mayor. Yeah, this is a, uh, a project that's been around for a little while. Um, we've uh, acquired the, um, the old substation building, which is only a tiny building. It's not a massive facility. Um, and this is the second part to that, to um, dress it up and put the mural on in, in time for the 100 years um, celebrations. Um, uh, yeah, it's a nice little project. I think, um, um, you know, it, uh, when it's done, it'll, it'll clean up a lot of that area that's over there opposite the mine entrance. And um, I'm also um, of the opinion that it'll, it, it'll be some assistance to the well-being of the community, and particularly those workers that are going in and out of the mine all the time. So um, happy to support again. And the committee's um, really, really behind this one. Thanks. Thank you. Any comments or questions on this one? Okay, all those in favour? <coughs> and that's carried. That now takes us to 11.15, which is the wrap out of Brown's application for Opera Queensland. Would someone like to move the officer's recommendation? I'll move, Madam Mayor. <coughs> um, that Council endorses the Regional Arts Development Fund RADF committee recommendation to approve the RADF funding to Opera Queensland in the amount of $10,994 plus GST for their project Lady Sings the Maroons to be held at the Mount Isa Civic Centre on the 16th of May, okay. 2023. Okay, second for that motion. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor, would you like to speak on behalf of this one? Yeah, uh, thanks Madam Mayor. Um, the, um, the RADF committee uh, had a close look at this and uh, articulated that um, it is a, you know, a very professional production. They uh, they work closely with the community and they um, are looking at developing people within the community around opera and um, they, they, uh, this, this uh, particular um, show is being run through a variety of um, regional and rural areas and uh, we're happy to support it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Yeah, I've just got a question with that. So, I mean, do they charge for people to go and are we charging them for the Civic Centre? Uh, look, I believe most of that work's been done already, yeah. Um, and they, uh, this is a, an out of rounds um, application to support the project um, and, and to, to do some work within the community. Um, they've booked the Civic Centre already, so I imagine that's been done through the offices um, and, and being paid for, um, but I, I can't quite confirm that here. Yeah, last time, last term, there was one I think called "Lady Sings the Blues," and that was actually a free concert. It was free that time. I'm not sure. Okay. It's be free. Can I, I just sort of make a suggestion that I mean, if this comes, we need to know all that sort of inf information because yeah, I'm a bit concerned. I mean, we don't. I mean, they might be charging two hundred dollars a ticket for all we know. Mm. So I think we need to ha know the full information of you know what we're charging for the civic center whether it's been paid for and whether we uh, you know the, the the public have to pay because I mean, at the end of the day we're giving out the public money and then they're getting charged to go to, to watch the show watch it anyway yeah oh, that's a good point um mr ceo could we ask perhaps the officer to 
address that question before we make a decision? If we uh, while we're waiting for the officer, last year I went to the poet's um, breakfast and Opera of Queensland were there and uh, they launched a song and they'd gone out to all the schools in Mount Isa and uh, put together a song about Mount Isa from, from a child's perspective, which was really awesome. So it, it just showed me that they were definitely engaging with Mount Isa community and trying to want <coughs> to get people interested in opera and so on. So that, and, and it was a really good song that they put together. Is it worth um, going? Yeah, just keep going. Yeah, 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 going so. next one? Yeah. 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 All right, so we'll let that one sit and we'll, we'll, we'll come to that one. Is there a motion or second? Yeah. Yeah. Motion. 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 So moved. Okay, a second for that. All those in favour? What am I voting for? Uh, just to lay it on the table oh. while just we wait for the information. Yeah. Just sit there, we'll come back to it. And we can keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone happy for that? I'm sure they'll just be able to clarify that. What we were waiting for. So they the should um, put free concert in. Okay, so that takes us to 12.2, which is water sewerage overview report for February and March 23. 12.1? 12.1, yeah. Uh, oh, did I jump one? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going ahead of myself. So infrastructure services reports, 12.1, which is works and operations overview report for February and March 23. Councillor Tully? Thank you, Madam Mayor. That Council receives and accepts the February 2023 and March 2023 works and operations report. Can I get a second for that motion? Pray. Thank you. Councillor Tully, would you like to um, speak on behalf of this one? Um, thank you. Uh, just an overview. The disaster response in conjunction with the TMR and the LDMG and DDMG's request, including providing basic supplies to Camwheel, initial preparation of the Buchanan Park grounds, inspections of council roads that have been impacted by wet weather, Shoulder and road repairs on council roads and cleared stormwater drains, preventative maintenance on plant equipments, and maintenance of parks, gardens, and cemeteries. Any comments or questions on this one? No? I think, Madam Mayor, we, uh, the amount of work that's being done on the roads at the moment is um, um, quite considerable. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I just sort of like to um, acknowledge to the staff and that, that we are we are um, mindful of what they're doing um, and that sort of thing. But we are fielding a lot of requests from the community for you know repair work to be done um, in various spots. And you've heard from Mr. Bolger this morning about one one area, um, which is uh, it, it is quite bad there at that intersection in, on Enterprise Road. Um, um, but I, I just um, some of those areas. I just wonder um, if they're uh, like if they're at what level do they become dangerous? Because I, I think that one in Enterprise Road probably needs some kind of barricade, or or um, and there may be others in the community as well where if people actually drop a, a wheel in there, especially some of those smaller cars, it might damage the car pretty badly and um, and also cause an accident. If I could comment through the yeah, chair, yes, um, probably that um, Enterprise Road Traders Way is the worst of the ones that are left and actually it work commenced there this morning. Oh, right. So hopefully by the time we get out of the meeting it's all, <laughs> it's all fixed. Then the next worst one is Traders Way Sunset and that's due to be done on Sunday due to traffic and uh, various reasons. One of the reasons why it's dragged a little bit is we've been trying to do them all in hot mix rather than cold mix. The cold mix is cheap and easy but not a good long-term solution. The hot mix you can compact a lot better but uh, Fulton Hogan's the only source of, of that and they want to do 10 tonnes at a time. We 
we need two tonnes at a time. So we've been working in with jobs they've had elsewhere to get two tonnes when they're, when they're batching up, which is why it's a little bit... When that Sunset Traders Way is done, that's the, the worst of them out of the road. And there's some areas that will need reconstruction and that'll be future budgets, future programs, etc. Thanks, Director. Um, through the Chair, I just... The, the extent of the potholing through the city um, is significant, I, 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 would, I would think. Um, everyone would agree with that. But um, I just wonder, um, do we need to look at the type of stuff that we're laying and review that, you know, for, for future? Because um, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, you, you might have more experience about this, but about what, what happens in other cities when they get, you know, downpours of over a few months like that, ours seems to deteriorate really quickly and it, it may be that it's a mix of our intense heat during the year and dryness and then you come back and suddenly they're all soaked and it damages the roads to a great extent. But uh, I, I just wonder if we look to need to look do some sort of R&D about what type of things might work better here when we do actually lay roads. I think, yes, you're, you're definitely right and we're looking at uh, a better kit and probably moving to the hot mix is a better patch. As far as the, the roads go, the UV, uh, it breaks down the, the bitumen and we get more than our fair share of UV out here. So short of resealing the roads more regularly, which would be nice, but it's um, costly. Yeah. Um, we and, and where we are at the moment, of course, the, a lot of the roads have got a reasonable age on them. They've all extensive cracking and um, every time we get a rain we'll, we will get cohorts of potholes so first up we're gearing up to do a better a better fix on the potholes but a, in a longer term strategy to uh, look at rehabilitating the, the roads. All, all the roads have been graded, we've um, suggesting in the budget which ones to be done first, which are the worst condition, highest traffic uh, obviously enough but probably a budget will never conveniently take you through all the roads in a reasonable time frame, so there will always be some roads that you're patching up past their normal sort of use-by date. Thanks, Thanks, Stephen. Through, through Do you the chair, probably uh, just like to add on to that, like um, there's a, a lot of community comment on, on the condition of our roads, and um, I think uh, at, at the very least, um, uh, information is is what our community requires and I guess the uh, prioritization as the director just um, spoke about is um, is a message that can go out to community just to allay any fears that work's been done so uh, of course to do all of the roads is cost prohibitive uh, to the ratepayer and uh, the priority system is in place of, of uh, identifying those roads that are priority areas, uh, well used areas and getting to them. I think just a little bit of um, information for the community would be useful uh, in that case uh, to allay fears that nothing is getting done uh, whereas things are getting done. Um, Madam if I may add, yep. uh, absolutely uh, correct. We're overdue for a, a further um, one-off advice if you like about what we're doing to respond to the recent weather event, so potholes and um, overgrown areas. The second bit to this is Mr Jewell, you'll see, will be coming forward with some further and better reports that'll be make it easier for us and you and he and the organisation to communicate that very issue. So that's going to happen pretty soon. OK. <coughs> yep. Any other comments on this report? No, I think um, I, I'd like to also uh, agree with the Deputy Mayor that, you know, um, we did have a significant weather event and our staff did, were sort of very stretched and they, um, they responded very well. So I'd like to thank them for all their work and, um, and acknowledge that we are behind on our roads and some of the um, uh, maintenance I I uh, including the cemetery and hopefully we're going to catch them up in the next couple of weeks. All right. All those in favour? And that's carried.
Let's go back now to item 11.15, um, the RAD out of rounds application for Offer Queensland. Um, let's start with some questions to Brian. Uh, thanks, uh, Brian, for coming in <laughs> through the chair. Uh, so uh, this is a late application to RADF, and, and the RADF committee is supporting and recommending the, the, the financial support to the project. However, um, uh, some of the information that's it's not in the report about um, what Opera Queensland are offering, and, it, and some of this work's been done by council officers prior to it going through the RADF committee. Um, so uh, we just wanted to sort of get an outline of what they're providing and how the community's going to benefit from the concert. Yep, certainly, sorry. Um, the purpose is to put on a free event for community um, to answer the one question that I had raised earlier. There'll be no ticket price, whether it be $50, $100 or whatever it may be. It is a free community event. The funding that's applied for is to cover their um, costs associated with putting on the event. And that also include, I think it was $8,000 was their the sponsorship amount or so called sponsorship amount to get them here. The separation or the difference of that amount to the total of 10000 or so, don't quote me, sorry, whatever it was, was for the operational costs associated that would be covered by the Civic Centre by way of hire, technical, um, stage, lighting, whatever else was associated. Council does have the ability or the, if the needs there or the appetite to charge a cover, but those costs there are totaled so people can walk in off the street and enjoy themselves. That's good. We just uh, can we just make sure that the community know that we've done, we've you know it's a, a free event and that the council have put the bill for it because I mean it, it's important that we get some recognition for bringing all this sort of thing to it. Yeah, noted. Um, we'll make sure the um, appropriate <laughs> advice is put out to community regarding council being um, key sponsors and promoting the event as a free. Thank you. Any so everyone's happy with that. Yeah, thanks, Brian. Yeah, so what do I need to hear? So now just a procedural motion to take this application off the table. Oh, back on the table, sorry. All right, could table. someone move that we put this motion back on the table? Um, second. Are you moving it? Or? I can move it, yeah. yep. Oh, okay, I'll second. Yeah. Yep. Uh, all those in favour? That's carried. Yeah, so the um, we have a, a uh, mover and a second for the following recommendation. Um, can we all please now vote? All those in favour? And that's carried. That's 11.15? Yep. yep. So that now takes us back to 12.2, which is the Water and Sewerage Overview Report for February and March 23. Um, would someone like to move the... Uh, Councillor Stratton, is it? I'm just trying to find it. <laughs> What is it, 11 point? 189, page 189. 11 point, uh, 12.2. 12.2. I know, sometimes you need to touch one thing and you... Here we go. We'll wait, mate. Yeah, <laughs> about time. Um, through the Chair, Council receives and accepts the February 2023 and March 2023 water and sewage overview report. Um, can I get a second for that motion? Thank you. Uh, Councillor Stratton, would you like to speak on behalf of this motion? Yeah, as it's all there. I'd just like the uh, Arc to direct uh, how the smart meters are going, if that's okay. Thanks, Steve. Uh, through, through the chair, they're, they're going really well. The last batch of, I think it's, might have been 1,600, but uh, over 1,000 metres anyway, has actually been manufactured, has been put on a ship. So, uh, it probably won't get here till the end of, of May, but, that, <coughs> but then that will be all the metres that were in the um, original contract. So the metres we've already got are going in at a great rate. We're working on the ones that are behind fences and that sort of thing at the moment. That, uh, that slows things down a fair bit, but that suits us to slow things down because we're waiting for that last batch of metres. Um, probably the, the good news and a little bit surprising news is that I probably expected to find a lot more dodgy installations based on the dodgy installations we'd found early early on, but we hadn't. So um, either there weren't or people had enough sense to put their metres back and turn them around the right way and make sure that things were in order, knowing that metre changes were coming through. But either, either way, it's important that um, 
the, the meat is uh, changed out and uh, we don't need the extra problems associated with finding illegal connections, so that's probably a, a good thing. Um, we'll start to see the, the benefits, of course, when they're all in and we finally get a, a portal up that people will interrogate their own metres. But in, in the meantime, with the 4,000 plus that are there already, we can actually see places that have got significant leaks and we've contacted a few of those already. We're just working out what uh, what the protocol should be to to recognise them, send them a letter, let them let them know. Hopefully that'll be automated in the in the longer run. But uh, one place that we advised they had a leak had an apparent leak of about 15 kilolitres a day. Um, pretty significant. So. And of course, as soon as all the meters are in, we don't have to run around doing meter reads. They they read themselves. So, so some of the issues we had earlier in the year with uh, with water bills and all that, some of those resolved themselves too. And uh, what action are we, if any, are we taking with those people who were um, surfer navigating the meters? When we've found them, we've written them letters reminding them of what the penalties are and asking them to provide us with their version of events, if you like, not assuming that they did it. Uh, um, and a few of them will say that it was a previous owner and so on. Uh, apart from that, there's not a lot we can do because of evidentiary requirements and taking them to, to court. So we, um, we're probably settling for letting them know that we know. And uh, the smart meat is kind of work that out anyway because if if you tamper with a smart meter there's a number of alarms so if you turn it around try and use magnets on it anything like that it comes up with a flag and comes up on the on the system so that we will know and can take some some action so in the past if someone's had a zero uh, water reading what what council would have done is they would have gone back to the last two readings where it did work and um, split the difference and charge them for that are we doing that with those people? We haven't yet, but we've talked about we should do that. It, it, they're not zero readings, but uh, they're certainly not correct readings. Yeah. 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 It shouldn't be that in our water management policy that we yeah. adopt. Yeah. 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 So through the chair, I've got a, um, a question around the um, smart meters. Um, with the majority of them being installed now, um, is there any action to inform the community on how to monitor them themselves? Like there is, is there an app that can be uh, used to monitor their own water use? Um, the and, and will we be um, informing the community, look, this is the best way for you to monitor your own use? And, um, yeah, we have got, um, interesting enough, we, we discovered that um, the display on the metres doesn't always display. It's part of the battery life thing that lasts 15 years and sometimes a little bit of a, a, a lag between the, the display, so we didn't realise that ourselves until we had a few queries. But uh, we're preparing a fact sheet with the assistance of um, Xylem to explain to people what the metre is telling them and uh, we'll make that available. And I've got, I'll call it the draft, I've got access to the software that'll be uh, the phone, mobile phone type software, um, the app. Um, and I'm waiting for, for cost for that. It wasn't part of the original contract. It, it, it won't be exorbitant, but it's probably going to be well, thirty or $40,000 or something. But as soon as that's uh, available, we'll we'll try and roll it out. We hadn't gone to a great deal of trouble because we just didn't have the um, the, the number of metres to, to make it worthwhile. Now they're proceeding at a great rate. We're trying to finalise that so that we can let people get the benefit. Thank you. Thanks, Stephen. Okay. If there's no more questions, all those in favour? And that's carried. It takes us now to item 12.3, which is Major Projects Overview Report, March 2023. Would someone like to move the officer's recommendation? Oh. 
Was this 12.3? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, 12.3. 12. Uh, 12. Yep. major projects yep. overview report. Wake up, mate. Yes, yeah, sorry, Councillor uh, Stratton. The <laughs> Council receives and accepts the March 2023 major projects overview report. Sorry, I should have called you out on that. Um, a seconder for that motion? Stratton. Thank you, Councillor Stratton. Uh, Councillor Tully, any comments on this one? Um, no, I'd just, um, yeah, just like to thank um, the council workers for the help that they did uh, on the um, family fun park to, to get it up to you know, a, a suitable standard for our opening. And um, I do believe we're having a barbecue to, on Thursday at the works department. So I encourage all the councillors to come along and maybe not Councillor Stratton, but everyone else. <laughs> not enough snags there for me, Councillor. Oh, it's at the park. I thought it was at the depot. Thank you. Uh, I thought it was at the depot too, so lucky you clarified that. It's a good thing. Okay. Let them go to the depot. <laughs> <laughs> Not running properly. <laughs> be, be a typical, typical barbecue, barbecue at my place on my own. <laughs> okay. Any um, comments on this one? What's a punch list? What's left to do? Okay. <laughs> Everyone happy? Oh, just the Centennial Place. Um, be good to have an update on that, I think. Um, they, they look like getting away on time during April. I think uh, it was the last week of April this month. Through the chair. They're starting on the 26th or something? They're supposed, they were supposed to be on site, but I think it's going to be early May, but it's not a, a delay as such. It, it's, it's to do with material deliveries and that's so the materials are still being ordered, still coming. But um, they, they won't be on site physically until early May. Actually, Stephen. Sorry. I think we need to do something with that site and then also the petrol station across the road driving through town. They just look horrendous. The grass is so long. Yeah. Um, is there any way we could just like rip a snip the grass or something? Yeah, we were going to clean up the, the site. When they were coming sort of next week, we were going to let them do it, I guess. But now it's been delayed a couple of weeks, we'll get in and tidy that up. Um, the petrol station was mentioned to me. We we probably can do it, but we nearly have to give notice and do it as part of the notice because it's... No, no, we don't need to do the petrol station, but um, letters need to be sent to all the petrol stations to clean up their areas, except for the one that's really nice. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, sorry, Stephen, I have a... A question. Yesterday I went to have a look at the new basketball court and I see there's some damage there. Uh, yeah, one of the, the, well I'm hoping it's still the same bit of damage, not more, but uh, the one of the, thing. yeah, one of the rings was broken so they welded up temporarily. They're temporary backboards and posts. The, uh, the, they're more vandal resistant ones, better ones. Um, I'm not sure the entire story, but they were ordered and they've disappeared somewhere and they've had to reorder them. They're supposed to be coming by about the end of April, so we'll mark the courts, put up the the, the, the finer ones. We put up temporary ones to allow them to be used during school holidays since everything else was, was finished. So um, I'm hoping that it was only somebody doing a good slam dunk and hanging off the ring and they weren't sort of like real industrial strength ones. So it, it has broken. So I hope it wasn't vandalism. But the um, the the finer ones will be more resistant to people like you and I swinging off the ring, councillor. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so if there is no more comments, all those in favour, and that's carried. Now that takes us to general business, which is nil, and then. We are going into confidential items. So, do I need a, a motion to break? Um, yeah, adjourn for 10 minutes. Have yeah, would someone like to move a motion that we adjourn for 10 minutes and then reopen and close business? Thank you, Councillor Tully. Seconded. Thank you, Councillor Fortune. All those in favour? And that's carried. Um,
Um, the time is 11.31 a.m. and uh, <coughs> we are now resuming the ordinary meeting of Van Isa City Council. Um, could I um, ask someone to move the motion that um, council moves into confidential business under the grounds on which part of the council or committee may be closed to the public as listed in section 275 of the local government regulation 2012. Do I need to read all the Yep. So uh, for reason number one, the discussions uh, relate to the council's budget. And the second discussions relate to negotiations with oh, yep. Adler, yep. involved so in the council budget. Let me read that. Um, negotiations relating to the commercial matter involving local government for which public discussion would be likely to prejudice the interests of the local government. And I, is that the last one? Yep, just those two. Yep. Would someone like to move that motion? McRae. Can I get a seconder for that motion? Fortune. All those in favour? And that's carried.
the motion that council, uh, council re, uh, resumes in open in an open meeting. Thank you, Councillor Tully. Second. Seconded by uh, Deputy Mayor. All those in favour? <coughs> and that's <coughs> carried. Um, the time's 11.51 <coughs> and we're now in open business. <coughs> so, whoever went out first, Councillor Tully. Ah, uh, yep, so. Oh, sorry. Thank, thank you. Okay. He's stepping out, he's got a conflict. What one? The sponsorships and grants. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so this brings us to um, item 14.1, which is round two of the community grants and sponsorships 2022-2023. Would someone like to move the officer's recommendation? I'll move it from the mayor. <laughs> Ladies first, Phil. Okay, <laughs> Councillor McRae, you got it. I'd like to move that council award the following organisations to receive the round two community grants and sponsorship 2022-23 funding. Yeah. St Vincent de Paul, $5,000. Mount Isa and District Pony Club, $5,000. Christian Outreach Centre, Mount Isa, $5,000. Mount Isa Fish Stocking Group, $5,000. Mount Isa District Bow Hunters, $5,000. They add up to the total of $25,000. And in the sponsorship round, Mount Isa Ski and Powerboat Club, $5,000. Mount Isa Motorsport Sport and Recreation Club, $3,465. Mount Isa Townsville Economic Development Zone, $5,000. Mount Isa Campcraft Association, $10,815. Apex Mount Isa for the Rock Pop Mine Show, $4,000. Good Shepherd Catholic Parish, $5,578, totaling $33,858. Thank you. Can I get a seconder for that motion? Second. Thank um, you. <coughs> All those in favour? And that's carried. Okay, so that now brings us to item 14.2, which is the Enterprise Resource Planning, the ERP, Project for Additional Resourcing. Would someone like to move the officer's recommendation? I'll move, <laughs> Madam Mayor. I'll let you have that one. <laughs> ah, good on you. <laughs> the money one. Yeah. Uh, I'll move the council approves GWI Digital to deliver the ERP project additional resourcing amounting to $302,400, excluding GST for the financial year 2022-23 and $256,800 uh, $256, excluding GST for the financial year 2023-24. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Can I get a seconder for that motion? McRae. Thank you, Councillor McRae. All those in favour? And that's carried. Well, um, that brings us to the end of our agenda. The time is now 11.54. AM and I now declare this ordinary meeting closed. <laughs>